following show contains adult content. It's not our intent to offend anyone, but we want to inform you that if you are a child under the age of 18 or get offended easily, this next show may not be for you. The content, opinions, and subject matter of these shows are solely the choice of your show hosts and their guests, and not those of the Entertainment Network or any affiliated stations. Any comments or inquiries should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for listening. Hey ho, what's up everybody? Welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, bringing you the good times in music, fashion, pop culture, and entertainment. Uh, before we get started, let's say hi to my cool, outrageous man about town co-host, Mr. Ron Russell and Astro. And Astro, hi, 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 say hi. <laughs> I am wearing a Flash Gordon shirt that Jimmy made for me years ago. It's a one of a kind. It's a Jimmy Star. You want to go down, Astro? Go down, honey. I'll sit up so you can see it. Flash Gordon, that's who I am. I'm Flash Gordon, you know. Some people identify as they, you know, they're half man, half woman, but I identify as Flash Gordon. I really do. I think I am Flash Gordon. If I had a cape, I think I could fly to Mongo. So you guys, uh, we got a great show today. Um, we have two really fun guests, Warrington Gillette and Lane Hardy, and I'm hoping that we don't have a problem, but I'm letting everybody know ahead of time because me, I messed it up and... I originally had Lane Hardy scheduled at 12.15, but Warren needed to come on at 12.15, so I moved Lane to 1.10. And then when I sent everybody their links, I sent both of them links and told them to come on at 1.10. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so Warrington Gillette, you know, uh, even though he had said he wanted 1215, I wrote it in one part 1215 and the other part 110. So I've been trying to text him and hopefully he gets it and he comes on at the right time. Otherwise, otherwise I just screwed it up and it's totally my fault. Anyway. For once, something is your fault. In all the 10 years I'm with you, I have never heard you say <laughs> anything was your fault. Well, this Finally, one, something is your fault, Mr. Wonderful. This one is my fault. So wow. I'm hoping it doesn't get messed up because they're both very interesting <laughs> and they should be a lot of fun. In the meantime, um, I noticed that they uh, that some of our movie projects seem to be moving forward a little bit. And it looks like uh, Death Realm, The Haunting begins. You know, we might go into start going into production in the next month or so. And um, oh, which one is Death Realm? Death Realm. That's the one where you play somebody's father. We don't. Death Realm. I don't know what's your house. It used it's to not be called Death House. It's called Death Realm. You know, I the wish they make begins. up their mind. It's I been can't. Death Realm. The haunting begins for the last year. It's no, Death it's Realm. The haunting. Death went, House. No, it's Death Realm. The haunting begins, and they actually. And I play Kevin Bacon. I actually, uh, possibly yes. Possibly, so, if Kevin Bacon is available for the film. So what we're doing with that is I, I just updated IMDb today. I changed the title and put the new poster up. And uh, so and when are we going forward. into pre-production? Hopefully soon. When? Uh, I can't give you a date. Well, so, I you just... know what? We do everything is soon. Well, soon. Three years ago, it was soon. No. Yeah, three years ago, I got the script. And it was, no, oh, it we're going to go into production. Then COVID happened. Then the strike happened. That's going and to be then, going you know, soon. You know, I'm not getting any younger. It's okay. You're playing somebody's somebody who is old's father. So the older Does you look, the better. I'm old? <laughs> you are one evil little sissy Mary. Um, anyway, I think it's going to be going and uh, should be good. Um, and then we're also working on Ron's film. We have a beautiful yes. deck, and so we're working on the gift, the cursed gift of magic. No, it's the it's the, the cursed, cursed gift, gift of, magic. of magic, starring, and I'm so happy to say, Renee Taylor. Renee Taylor, as you know, was uh, Sylvia on The Nanny. She played Fran Drescher's mother. Uh, nobody could do this part but uh, Renee and two other actresses, Lainey Kazan, but Lainey's unavailable. So Renee stepped in and said, I'll do it. And I'm so happy that Renee, Renee's coming on our show soon. So she will be talking about it. Absolutely. Um so it should be a lot of fun. So we got a lot of just fun, cool things going on, and we're excited about all of it. 
Um, yes, if it all happens. You know, our business is such bullshit. Everything is, I, I, you know, dreamers. It's a dream business. Every person I know has a script in their back pocket, and it's the best script, and it's going to win Oscars, and it's wonderful, and they're all going to be rich living in Bel Air or Beverly Hills or wherever. And it's just a dream business. But sometimes those dreams come true. They're so come there's a true. chance that, you know, some people will get successful and live in Beverly Hills. I lived in Beverly Hills. No big deal. Although I like living in Beverly Hills. Either Only because way. my kids went to a good school. They went to El Rodeo. Either way. So that was good. Fix the camera, sure. Things okay. are all going good. And... Um, the weather is nice. We have B. Claudia just joined us in the chat room from Germany. Hello, hello. Yes. She's excited for our second guest. And if you notice the gouge in my arm, look at that. We were, we have an enormous chandelier in the dining room, and it's all uh, metal, leaves, pointy, sharp leaves and twigs. It's a gorgeous chandelier. And I said, you know what? If we sell the house, I really would like to take our chandelier with us because it's a big oval, and it goes with the 10-foot dining room table. So we were taking it down, and leaves gouged me all over. I got cuts all over from the friggin' metal leaves. Look at that. Look, look at that. Look, at I'm all, I'm all abused and beaten. That's okay. That's really because Jimmy beat me up. I didn't yeah. want to say it. Yeah, right. But Jimmy had... Yeah, but you can't say those kind of things. Well, people because think people it, think it's real. Like, people don't know. If you think it's real, you're stupid. <laughs> Okay, and you deserve to be stupid for the rest of your life. So Don Hinton has joined us in the chat room. So uh, Lucindy Lady Lake is in the chat room. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and my wristwatch is my beautiful Versace Sport. That's right, Versace Sport. So it's going to be fun. Everything is kind of like good all the way So around. I beat you to it, Dawn, before you ask what wristwatch I have. It's going to be a fun show because the guy from Palm, Sp little Palm Beach is going to be a lot of fun. I love Palm Beach. I used to go to lunch all the time at Taboo. Taboo's one of my favorite restaurants in Florida. <clears throat> and we'll talk about Taboo. And we'll talk about and a I went to school there. In Taboo, the restaurant? No, on Palm Beach. I went to school on Palm Beach. Oh, look at you. I didn't. I went to school in the dump <laughs> where people were criminals. They had bars on the school that I went to. And guards outside with machine guns. To kill us if we did anything bad. Well, uh, our our guest is the great grandson of uh, Post Serial Meriwether Post. That's the Post Serial, which Trump is now Mar-a-Lago. And when I was right. a kid in going to school, because I took a bus, because I lived on the other side. Oh, uh, on the we, poor uh, side. Uh, the it wasn't a poor lived? side, but oh. we took a bus to going to school. And we want passed, the rich side. But, please, the please, rich please, please let me talk. The bus I know, but let me talk. Well, no, I'm not going to let you talk because you bore me to death. Okay, but everybody else loves it. And they so love they it. Love they it. don't know any better. Yeah, they do. Listen. So, you anyway, know, no, no, listen. Are you rich or poor? I wasn't either. I was middle class. Common middle class. Either way. We used to drive by the Meriwether Post House every day, and on top of the walls before it became Mar-a-Lago, they had broken glass glued all over the top of the post, so that way people wouldn't try to climb over the fence because if you would, you'd cut your hands all up with all the glass that was there. Now, obviously, it's like... You know, amazing. And when amazing I used to property. walk to school, which was about 30, 40 miles from where we lived, in the rain, in the snow, uh, there were walls around where we lived also with guys on top with machine guns. And, you know, they'd blow a whistle every now and then, and we'd go out in the yard for exercise. And then. What are you talking about? We'd have Nobody's to, even following that. <laughs> we'd have to go back to ourselves. Well, I went to a school in Queens called LIC. And we had a song that we sang. Oh, LIC, please don't cave in on me. <laughs> what does LIC stand for? Long Island City High. Okay. And that was where I went. I was born in in, in uh, Manhattan. No, I was born in uh, Queens College, but it was in Brooklyn. They got all confused. They had all these Queens things in Brooklyn. Uh, so I, you know, people say, where, where, where were you born? I said, Brooklyn. They say, what hospital? I say, Long Island. I think it was called Long Island Hospital. But it was in Brooklyn. But that's because Brooklyn people get confused about a lot of things. Okay. Yeah. Like you. We would be very confused about you. 
Nine, if you ever nine, came nine. to my neighborhood, we'd beat you up. We would. We would have beat you up and said, hey, fuck it. We don't want you in our neighborhood. Well, they wouldn't because nobody had Girl any, wearing. Nobody pink. even knew I was gay. And actually, every, the chat oh, room thinks on. I look beautiful. In Brooklyn with that shirt, we would have spotted you. Well, I'm from Palm Beach. And since our guest is from Palm Beach, and this is a with Palm that, Beach brand. You wore that shirt with those fairy glasses to Brooklyn. Would you wipe the street with you? Now, nowadays, they wouldn't. They would back in then, maybe. Back like, in those days, yeah. We nowadays, because, they would really? be like, this guy must be like Well, gay chic. people were not, you know, accepted back in those days. So you never would have been accepted, Miss Palm but Beach. Nobody Tennis knows. Queen. Nobody never knew. Or they never knew you were gay. They must have no. been blind and stupid. No, that's not true. Be nice. You're not I'm being not nice. being nice. I could spot you were a girl a mile away. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Nobody spots that. And that's why I married him because I love him so much. We do this all the time. We 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 got, we just have fun having fun with each other, you know? That's what keeps a marriage alive. If I was always they say I look fabulous in this shirt, so well that's because they want to be nice after no. I was, you know, a little very rough Eastery on you. though. Very yeah, Eastery. Nice I think I Easter's have... this week, isn't it? I think Easter's on Sunday. Is it Easter? I think so. Oh, I got to get the rabbits out. Thanks, B. B says I look This wonderful. shirt that I'm wearing, the Flash Gordon shirt, Jimmy made. He made it especially for me when he was designing clothes. So it's a one-of-a-kind. Here, let me lift it. He loves Flash Gordon. It's a one-of-a-kind Flash Gordon. Because I love Flash Gordon. Jimmy knows that. I think I'm Flash Gordon. In my next life, I'm coming back as Flash Gordon. And he has some cool Flash Gordon stuff. Oh, yeah. I collect. Uh, Flash Gordon things. As a little boy, I like. We Flash didn't Gordon have too. heroes like today. The only hero that we had, and I think it Flash Gordon. Yes, Flash Gordon was before Superman, and Flash Gordon was before all of the uh, superheroes. All we had was Flash Gordon, Emperor Ming, Princess Azura, Mongo. I mean, all those wonderful things that I grew up dreaming about what happened oh they want to know what it uh, is it's a star you know charles middleton who played emperor ming in the 1930s uh v version of flash gordon was scary oh he was the ugliest creature you could see and he was mean ming the merciless and flash gordon and dale flew on a rocket i love the rocket it went like this <clears throat> anyway they went to mongo and they had to stop Emperor Ming from using the death ray that was going to blow up the earth. And then, of course, he met everybody that was wonderful. My favorite people were the rock people because you'd see a mountain and then suddenly da -da 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 the rocks would become these, these creatures that walked. It was a wonderful series. Uh, I, I own it. I own all of the original Flash Gordon starring Buster Crab film. And Jimmy and I sat down when I looked at it and it was corny as all hell, but but wonderful. And it's I, fun. And I grew up loving uh, Buster Crab and Flash Gordon. And he's actually got mm -hmm. a uh, an action figure um, that looks like Buster Crab that Jimmy got that him. I got him, and he's also. And then you know we had Sam Jones on the show, who's the uh, the, who's the next Flash. To who I might be in a movie with soon, which thrills me. So you see, folks, in life you never know what turns you're going to make that are going to be wonderful. Whoever dreamed that when I was a kid, ten years old, that one day I would uh, work in a movie with Flash Gordon? Yeah, I think it's awesome. You know, just like I never dreamed that I would ever be best friends with Jane Russell for so many years. I loved Jane as a kid. And as an adult, we became the best of friends for a long time, up until her death. So I, uh, I keep so checking wait, messages. Going, I'm not finished. So going back to Hollywood is the land of dreams. Yes, it is. And our dreams do sometimes come true. Now you may speak, my handsome. Well, look husband. at these. Look at this. Look, look, look at our show. We get to like hang out with all the coolest people ever on the show, and that makes me happy. It's a lot of fun, and I enjoy it. And I'm good. Uh, and Astro's happy. And Astro's happy. And all of our dogs are superheroes. I haven't heard back, you guys. So in case for the people who just joined in, I, I totally messed up, and I gave the same time to both guests. And I tried but, to get it fixed, but it's not fixing so fast. So I don't know if we're going to have a first guest or not, or I don't know if they're going to both show up at the same time. If we second, don't have a first person, one. if we don't have a first guest, put on some strip music and I'll do a strip tease. Yeah. It won't be pretty, 
but it could be entertaining. Right, huh? It could be. An, oh, I would like you it. You know, all of our dogs are named after heroes. This is Astro, and we have Shazam, and we have Bren, Bren, Brenda Starr. Remember Brenda Starr? She was that beautiful. Oh, I thought we named Brandy after, like, uh, You're a Fine Girl, that song. No, I named her after Brenda Starr, Brandy Starr. Brenda Starr used to have always a twinkle. They used to draw a star coming out of her face near her eye, and she was beautiful, Brenda Starr. She was a reporter who was also like a superhero. That's enough of that. <clears throat> right, Astro? So what do we do for an hour until we'll the next see guest if he comes? Well, we yeah. have to talk about things. So what would you like to talk so it's about? So we have to fill in an hour. In I don't know if we have to because maybe you'll get the message and come on. Hour. Let's talk about my favorite subject. You. Me. <laughs> um, should I get a facelift? Look at the difference. There's not even a question about Astro likes it. Mm. See, he likes the daddy young. Mm. I like love it too. Seriously, look at this. Stop it, Astro. I'm showing my facelift. Wait, be a good boy. Mm. Gotta oh. remember, a lot of people are listening and they can't. They can't. Oh, see, those so of you who could not, who who are not watching and listening, I'm pulling up. No. I'm pulling up my face. B says no facelift. Who said no? I think I agree who with you. Who said B. that? Who? B. Who? B. Oh, B. 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 Go screw yourself. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Look at that. I look 50. Look at how good looking. I'm going to have it done. You she know, says that you're the original Hollywood star and you should look like it. Oh, bullshit. You know what? <laughs> they used to be like 10000 bucks, 15000 the max, when all my friends were getting facelifts. Now I understand they're $30,000 to get a little... Mm. But you know what? First, I'm going to try Botox. Because if they inject Botox all over here, watch. Those puppet lines go away. And then I'll get some other shit put in my face. What is that called? That other crap. Photox? No, more uh, poison. So I could poison my I don't skin. Know, botulism. Yeah, they're putting botulism <laughs> in my face. Isn't that what Botox is? It's like botulism. It is. It's botulism. Astro, you're upset when I talk about a facelift, aren't you, my darling? Then we won't look alike anymore. Ast doesn't Astro look like me? It's my uh, son. Anyway. Astro, honey, show everybody how handsome we are. Oh, the tongue Don't tongue kiss, Don't uh, tongue like kiss your it. father, you perv. So I think um, mm. uh, real quick, we're going to take a little music break. I'm going to try and call the guest and see if I can get him on the line. Would be nice and, um, if we had guests. But it's my oh, fault, so I can't blame anybody. Would be and, very uh, nice if we uh, had guests. So what we're going to do is going to play Stefano. He did an original mm -hmm. Usher, Usher medley. Um, Stefano was on American Idol, and the guy coming on, our, well, our second guest is supposed to be um, Lane Hart is Lane Hardy, and he's the American Idol winner, and uh, so it should be fun. So check out you guys here, Stefano's original Usher medley. Enjoy. You started when we were younger. You were mine, my boo. Now we're not the brothers taking over, but it's still in your eyes, my boo. Even though we used to argue, it's all right I know we haven't seen each other in a while You will always be my, there goes my baby Ooh, girl, look at you You don't know how good it feels to call you my girl There goes my baby Wanna leave the one I'm with Start a new relationship with you There's so much to do Think about a reason All the things that come along with You make me, you make me Wanna leave the one I'm with Start a new relationship with you There's so much to do Think about a reason All the things that come along with You make me Cause I'm always on the top Tonight I'm on the bottom Cause we trade in places Stop, tell me you ain't stopping Cause we trade in places Now put it on me, baby, till I say Ooh, we 
can't tell me to shut up before the neighbors hear me. This is how it feels when you do it like me. Trading places, you got it, you got it bad. When you're on the phone, hang up and you call right back. You got it, you got it bad. If you miss a day without your friend, your whole life's off track. No, you got it bad when you're stuck in the house. You don't wanna have fun, 'cause all you think about, you got it bad when you're out with someone, but you keep on thinking about somebody. You got it bad. Stage, fifty thousand fans screaming in a rage. Bodyguards in limousines. This is the way I see you in my dreams. Paparazzi flash with your pictures, all of you who hanging on my bedroom wall. Yeah, I'm a kid again. I feel like thirteen, but I mean, since we fell in love, girl, I'll be it. I'll be your groupie, baby. Cause you are my superstar, oh, and as your number one fan, give me your autograph, sign it right here on my heart. I'll be, I'll be a groovy baby. Cause you are my superstar, oh, and as your number one fan, I'll do all that I can. So you are super, you are. Freaking love it! I think he's like so great. Ron doesn't like the falsetto, but oh, he has such a beautiful voice when he sings normal. That I hate that song. That's what he's like now known for. No, it's not. He has a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful voice. I've heard him sing live to a piano at a party, and he was fabulous. That is so like artificial and. I love it. Too much. That's oh, no. the stuff that makes him good. Yeah, you like that stuff. I don't. I like singers that can sing. I don't like yodelers. You know that. Yeah, he's not a yodeler though. No, anyway, Stefan has a beautiful voice. When Stefan sings a beautiful song, nobody does it better. You just like the the when he sings the old time songs. No, not the old time songs. Not true. He's got a couple of new ones out there, but I think a beautiful. Where he sings like an angel. I think he's got the best falsetto out of anybody I've heard. No, this is like I don't understand. He's talking, he's singing. Oh, he sounds like, shoot him! I thought he was in pain. Somebody <laughs> should shoot him. Anyway, anyway, I don't like that sort of music, and that's my opinion, and I'm entitled to my opinion, James. Oh no, what's your name, James? Yeah, that's fine. No, I'm entitled to my opinion. Absolutely. Everybody's entitled to voice. Luckily, though. Listen, I believe in freedom of speech. Luckily, I get to uh, pick the music that we play since I know what our audience likes since we're getting yeah, all these Yeah, no, plays. if I picked music to play, there would be people who would love it because I would put Tchaikovsky, I would put opera. Well, we you know, can't and there are, But there are people out there who do like it. Look at my daughter, Deirdre. She paid $300 for a ticket <clears throat> and flew to New York to go to the Metropolitan Opera House to hear Tordendot, okay? So there are crazy people like that in the world, too. Actually, I put her video, too, up on uh, her video for part of it on uh, my TikTok, and, uh, and it got hundreds of thousands of plays. It was great. Yes, because to go to the Met in New York City to see that opera is quite an experience. So you see there's a market for everything. And it doesn't make me wrong or bad because I say I don't like a certain kind of music. Don said, she just, like up, Don said she just went up really close to the TV to look, and she said, your hair looks beautiful today. My what? Your hair is beautiful. My hair? Yeah. It's like a wild And B. Claudia loves, uh, loves I, opera. I, 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 but would you believe I combed this before we went on the air? And I went out on the patio and sat with the dogs to make out a little bit. You know, I always like to play with the dogs before we go on the show. And I came back in, and I look like a Zulu. Look at this. 
I mean, it gets it just has a mind of its own. It does not listen to me. You could put plaster on it, and it'll be like crazy. I think it's funny. But okay. when it was black, it was beautiful. Oh, God, how I loved my hair when it was black. It was sexy because it used to curl all over. Now white. I look, you know, I do look like Jane Russell. A little bit. When Jane had her white hair. Anyway. I think that's funny. Okay. That's All the dogs are just But thank around. you very much for admiring my hair. Sexy silver, she Watch, says. Watch, before the show is over, it'll be like, uh, like I just got laid. I don't know what it's going to look like. It is a little wild and messy. It gets wild, Jimmy. I can't help it. You know that. And if we go out in the car and I open the window, forget it. I look like it was teased up and I'm wearing an old lady bouffant. No, I'm not lying. And this isn't colored, you guys. That's his natural color. Yeah. My sister, when I was young, used to hate me. She used to say to me, you got the beautiful long legs. You got the long eyelashes and you got the curly hair. I said, yeah, and so what's the point? Because she didn't have, she had different legs. She didn't have beautiful legs. And you have beautiful legs. And my sister had stick straight blonde hair with blue eyes. Imagine a, a blonde haired, blue eyed sister. They are though like your silver. My what? Well, it's silver. It's really white, but it, I guess on the air it looks kind of silvery and gray. Mm, it's white. It's white. It's natural. I didn't touch it. I would love my dark hair again. But if I, maybe when I, you know, I'm in a movie where I star in this film and I play Dracula. And I play a gay Dracula. A dra vampire, not a gay Dracula. Oh, a gay vampire. Because Dracula's me. an actual character. Not Dracula. I'm playing it totally different. Than, and I teach my daughter how to be a vampire. And we go off to a magic land. It's a very wonderful script. It's going to be a fun movie. So I'm thinking of maybe dyeing my hair black for that film. And I wonder what I would look like at 150 with jet black hair. What do you think, Jim? I um, look like an old queen trying to look young. Huh? Yeah, it won't look good. I don't think I'd look good. <clears throat> but anyway, we are what we are. We become what we become. And I'm just grateful that I'm still here no matter what I look like. That's right. Right? And you have lots of things going on that are getting I have ready to so be done. so much going on, but nothing is going on, you know? Well, it's going to be going on. Well, I had a nervous breakdown when I heard or thought that we were going on strike again. I said no. I quit the business. We can't. You can't do this to us anymore. It backed us up so badly. I think. What? Well, how many movies am I in now? Six, seven, eight. I don't know. Several. A lot of movies. The only one that you have dates for is Climb Motel Three. Oh yeah, that I just signed. August, my, August twenty second to no, August twelfth to twenty seventh. I think. Right. I just signed my contract for that, where I play Major, no General Milan, uh, who gets his army, his uh, soldiers together to go kill the killer clowns that kill people. The script is good. It's, I think it's uh, Joe Kelly's best script out of the, uh, it, it's, a, it's a trilogy. This is the third one. And I think this one's the best one. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. I think so. We have to go to Nevada and we have to stay two nights at the- most, At the actual clown motel, which, which is, supposed is haunted. To be it's supposed to be haunted and it's got, Kill a clown. It's a crazy place to sleep. I'm going to bring a couple of guns with me. Absolutely. Make believe guns, fake ones. Actually, talk. What, what should we talk about seriously? Let's talk about something intelligent for a minute so people will know that we're not totally stupid. Actually, I'm going to see if maybe I can get our second guest to come on now. Second guest. So talk for a minute. Talk for a minute. Okay, what can we talk about? The weather. Everybody talks about the weather when they have nothing else to talk about. So let's say the weather in Palm Springs is windy, sand is blowing, sun is out. It's about 65, maybe 70, and we're all awaiting summer. Well, before summer comes, that 190,000 degrees of burning heat, we get a small window, a very slight window of perfect weather. We will get maybe a month and a half of every day a perfect cool 80 with sun. And that I so am looking forward to. I now we've discussed it. weather. Let's talk about sex. Everybody likes to talk about sex. Jimmy? Yes. What, what's your the kinkiest thing you ever did sexually? I'm not going to talk about that to all of our people. I picked you up in the mall. That was the kinkiest thing. 
That was the kinkiest. He said, "What's what's going on with the move to New York in the garden?" So we went to the mountains, you guys. We went to Big Bear oh, oh. on Saturday. It was twenty nine degrees and snowing and slushy, and and uh, we don't think. That, first of all, it hurts my knee. The cold air, water, air hurts my knee, and he can't stand the cold. <laughs> well, I had on Tom's without socks, and I had on thin thin jeans, and of course a, a shirt with a little jacket. <clears throat> inappropriately dressed and it was snowing and it was 29 degrees and I had to pee pee. So there's a sign there. It says public restrooms. Well, I followed the sign down this long, long road walking in slush. My feet, bare feet were walking in slush, ice all over. My shoes were soaking wet. I started to say to myself, you're insane. You are one crazy motherfucker. What are you doing up here, you idiot? This is not for you. And you want to move to New York? What are you, crazy? Uh, uh, oh, I'm going to like get back to the car. I'm going to tell Jimmy we are not moving back to New York. No way can I put up with this crap. Well, I can't find the bathroom. I don't know where it went. I'm walking around this gigantic parking lot in the slush with the snow, and now the wind starts to blow. I needed wind, right, to blow that cold shit through my body. I cannot find the bathroom, but I spot a dumpster, a great big dumpster. And I went behind the dumpster and I began to pee. Because when you got to go, you got to go. Well, my dick went nuts because it never felt such cold. And my <laughs> dick began to shrink down to like a half an inch. I mean, it was painful, painful. So I quickly put my dick back in my pants to warm it up. And of course, then it got warm. It went back to 14 inches. <laughs> Only kidding. So <laughs> now I walk. I can't find where I'm going. I'm lost. And I'm walking. Now I begin to cry almost, saying, oh, my God, I'm going to die. They're going to find me frozen, a frozen queen, dead here. I kept walking and walking. I said, this way, that way, this street, that. He's got the car parked by that doll store, you know, where they sell all those action figures. action figures. So now I stop and I ask these stupid people up there, stupid people, barely spoke English. I picked the wrong people. Do you know where their action shop is? Oh, no, no, no. They don't know nothing. Nobody knows where I'm going. So I now actually I found said, him eventually. Now I said, well, you're going to die. You're going to die any minute. And then I see Jimmy holding Astro. And I walked up to them, and Astro was shaking like crazy. And Jimmy had him wrapped up in a sweatshirt. I said, oh, my God, Jimmy, let's get in the car and the fuck out of here. <laughs> and we got in the car. I put the button on for the heat to seat, so we could put the heat on. I'm surprised we didn't go on fire. But <clears throat> excuse me, we warmed up, and Astro felt better. Now we're driving home, and I look at Jimmy, who's terrified of driving the mountain roads, but at least we're warm. And I said to Jimmy, honey, I don't think we should live in New York. And Jimmy said he couldn't move his knee because of the cold air. I couldn't move my ankles, my knees, my wrist, my neck, my shoulders, my jaw, or my dick. So I said, no, this is not for us. We have to go to warmth. So Boca came up, Florida. And I said, you know, I was really happy living in Boca all those years. And that's where I met you. And you're from Florida. So maybe we should go back to Boca. And then we'll just come back and forth because we'll be coming right. here for work all the time. Right. And that's my story about Big Bear. So the, the moral of the story is go to Big Bear in the summer. <laughs> it's wonderful in the summer. It's so beautiful. And it's beautiful with the snow. I mean, driving down that treacherous mountain, the snow was all over the place, and it was quite beautiful. The pine trees, beautiful, beautiful view. California is a very beautiful state. It offers ocean, desert, mountain, snow. It offers everything, if you like everything. Actually, yeah. So we'll be coming back and forth because we're also going to be doing films in Nevada, we are going to be going to Portugal and Greece. We're going to be shooting a bunch of stuff in Atlanta and some stuff in Texas. So we're kind of going to be shooting all, and we're going to be shooting in West Virginia. 
So we're going to be kind of shooting stuff all over the place anyway. And yeah, luckily, we can do sure our show from anywhere. Make sure it's West Virginia in the summer because Virginia gets very cold. Yeah, it's okay. Randy, get away from down there. I don't want you and, to unplug and, you the know, lights. I, re I really wish that planet Earth did not have winter, that everywhere was perfect, like 75 degrees of perfect weather. I guess also it's because when you get to be almost 84 years old, I am told, uh, cold hurts, and it does hurt. It, it's, it's, it's I agree with that because I love the cold always growing up. I, I would always love the cold. And now I still like it if it didn't hurt my knee and I could walk in it. But since I can't really walk in it, <laughs> it doesn't really work. No, I find the older you get, the more you need comfort. You really look for comfort. You don't sit in hard chairs. You don't walk on crooked roads. You, you want everything to be easy and everything should be pleasant. You don't want to hear people's hard luck stories anymore. And you don't want negativity in your life. You don't want older people or people your age saying, oh, we only got a couple of years left before we croak. No, you don't want to hear that because that's negative. What you have to think of is I have so much ahead of me to enjoy instead of I'm going to drop dead in a year or two. So, Age is definitely something that you experience if you're lucky and you grow to understand it because it's the most difficult thing that you will have to do in your life. And that is to grow old successfully. Take it from me. It's not an easy job. As Betty Davis said, old age ain't for sissies. Awesome. Right, you big old sissy? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, now you talk. I'm tired. Hang on. I'm working on things here. What okay. Are you working on? How did you screw it? up? I did is you know how you when you send an email, there's a subject matter. I wrote the wrong time in the subject matter, but in the body that has the link and everything, I wrote the right time. Um, I have no idea what that means, but I'm sure everybody it, else does. Well, you, whatever it means, it's, it's a bad. It's bad. It right? was my bad. Yeah, it's, it was totally on me. So uh, if it's your bad, take down your pants. Uh, I will wet my yes. hands and I will spank you. But I've been sending a fucking hundred million messages and like nobody, nothing's getting through. So there's nothing I can do about it. Would you um, like that? No, if I, if I wouldn't. If I pull down your pants, wet my hands, and spank no, you? No, I would not like it on your um, hiney. If I spanked your hiney, how nobody's, nobody's nobody's responding. No, don't don't I'm gonna talk about things like that. That's not don't proper. talk about things like Those that. Those aren't proper. Do you know how many people do that? Show? Oh, I'm sure a lot of people do. I that. mean, I know so many straight people. The husbands whip their wives' asses and they love it. I never understood it, but if it works for you, fine. Why not? Hey, whatever. Hey, we say in Italian. So, so wait, we, we've actually been talking for 40 minutes. So let's take another music break because i got two Are more songs kidding? that we can We're play to play for some 40 time. Min I mean, I'm 40 minutes older. Yeah, oh, 40. So you guys, uh, at World Star PR, we're working with a really cool young artist. Her name is Baker Grace. Eileen and I are working with her. She's gorgeous. Um, she's got a new song called Painkiller out. And so uh, why don't Thank we listen you. to it and... Um, uh, and then we'll be back in a minute. So please enjoy Baker Grace Painkiller. Painkiller. Come a little closer. Don't be shy. If you're over being sober, I got something you might like. Come on, let your guard down. Mm -hmm. Every step you didn't take. Cause that you where you are now. Let me make it worth the way The promise of more is a powerful force That's consuming the peace in your mind It's not a secret, you don't have to keep it inside Kiss me, I'm a painkiller With no catch, you'll light it up I'll be the match Kiss me, I'm a painkiller Free your mind Kiss me, I'm a painkiller And send me that fire Fuck a diamond, it can make you feel I'm the only thing you know is real You say climb me when there ain't no top 
come down when the clothes are off All the limos and lights late into lonely nights In the mornings you're fading and gray It's not a secret, you don't have to hide it away Come a little closer, come a little closer oh, oh, oh. Kiss me, I'm a painkiller with no She's got a bunch of great songs. Um, she has a cool story. When she was like 15 or something, she got signed by a big record label, but everything didn't work out. So now this song. Now she's an independent this artist. Song, when we were young, we would call it music to screw by. <laughs> it's definitely fuck me music. <laughs> it's so sexy. You could get an erection just listening to the music without looking at her. Now, if I were a pole dancer and I swung from a pole, this is the song I would swing by. It is a very sexy song. She has a bunch of them, Excuse me, I'm not finished okay. speaking rudeness. Excuse my vulgarity at times, folks, but there are people out there who are quite vulgar, who enjoy vulgarity. They find it refreshing and friendly. So screw you if you don't like it. Right she's Astro. also got uh, she got a song called American Dream Girl that was a huge yeah, she hit. She looked like she was getting and, laid um, the whole time in the song. And uh, she's been she's released about twenty five songs I think in her career, and they're really really good. She's very very good, and they're all different. But she's got a unique voice, um, and and people seem to love it because she gets you know tons Even and her tons voice of views. sounded like she was having an orgasm. That's funny. It was sexy. She's a very sexy lady. Very sexy song. She's you like know, Ravel's funny. Bolero, if you are familiar. In my day was the music that you made love by. Because everybody said if you have the rhythm of the of Bolero while you're having intercourse, both partners will be very happy. So we used to screw our brains out to Ravel's Bolero. Did you ever screw your brains out to music, honey? No. I know that. Pity, pity, pity. <laughs> but anyway. Um, but everybody seems to like her a lot. So. Yeah, she's good. It's a good song. I've not, no, you know, it's an, it's it's a hot song. It's very sexy. And, and she's, and Brian, she's, you guys she's can very, follow. I think she's Baker Grace official, you guys. You can she's follow very her on social sexy. media. She's really she, cool. She was reminiscent of Rita Hayworth and Gilda. She's very Oh, sexy. yeah. She, and she always does that. It's like she's. Yeah, she's um she's a very very beautiful young girl because she's young she's like twenty years old I think or something yeah, twenty one. No, she's very. But she's starting to play a bunch of clubs in L.A. and New York, and uh, with the long hair and the whole way she moves, she's like a Rita Hayworth. For those of you out there who don't know who Rita Hayworth is, she was one of the sexiest, glamorous movie stars of the nineteen forties. And the film that I recommend you watch is Gilda. It's an excellent film you will enjoy it and she does a wonderful strip tease to who put the blame on Maine boys who put the blame on Maine right Jimmy don't you want to sing and dance and strip no. to that 
You don't want to. Strip I don't even me? know that song, so I, I've seen the movie though. It's a good but, movie. Why don't you want to strip tease for me? Because I don't do those things. Like I don't to... know how to do it. Number one, I don't know oh, how to do it. Just... Number two, I can barely walk. No, so I'll, like, stand, I can't... I'll yeah. stand you on a chair and I'll play <laughs> sexy music, and then little by little you take off your clothes, and then when oh, Brandy did it again. Every week she does that. That's at least we don't have a guest on for right now. No, but so she, she okay. annoys me when she does. I know. That. Well, she's like licking Brandy, the carpet. You do that. On television, she's jealous because Astro goes on television. Oh wow! Well. Every week she steps on that button. How she found it? She's a smart little girl. Now there it goes. Here we're back. And she ruined my joke. I built that joke up, and she ruined it. Oh well. And then you'll be on top of the chair naked, and when I stop laughing, we can make love. That was the punchline. Yeah, be, and when you're I right, stop. Be. So when, when I stop laughing from looking at you naked on the chair, then we'll make love. It would have been funny, but now it's ruined because Brandy ruined it. Hello, hello, hello. Hang on, it's our guest. Our guest is here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm, see, my hair's starting in already. There it goes. It goes into a... Ugh. Anyway, where is he? Keep it? talking. Well, he doesn't know how to do it, so I'm, I'm going to kick this guest in the head when he comes on. It's not his fault. It's my no, fault. No, your fault, and now he doesn't know how to do it? Oh, my God, we're cursed. Well, somebody's giving me the evil eye. Do you believe in the evil eye? The Italians, you know, believe in the evil eye. That's why I wear my horn. See my horn? This is a, a horn. Horny. That's a horn. Evil eye. If anybody wishes me bad, it goes back to them. Anything pointy will do that. Says, Why am I talking? Now they about say that? Ron needs hairspray. What? Okay. Are we back? Are we uh, here? They don't, let's mm -hmm. see. Hey, Juan, do you see him there? He says he's on StreamYard. Oh, this. What happened to studios and professionalism? And Brandy, Brandy, go sit down, honey. Be a good girl. Go sit down. You can't come in my lap, and you can't come on television. Don't be jealous. No. That's why you're knocking our equipment out, huh? She's doing it. She has to float around the buttons. Look at her. She's going all over the, the equipment. Oh, dead air, dead air. I talk, talk, talk. Oh, talk, 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 talk. What am I, a robot? Yeah, it just talk, talks. Talk. I'm working yeah. on... Plug my ass in, and I talk. My God, he's so mean. I'm not mean. You see, mean I'm working. I'll sing mean to me. Press enter Why studio. must you be mean to me? Can't you see? I'm all alone and crying. I don't know why. Did you enter studio? Yeah, he's there. Now Astro's after me. Astro, come up, honey. This is a crazy show. Why does anybody watch it? How can they They're not going to watch this one because this one's not going very good. I mean, how do they follow this show? It's so insane. We go from subject to subject. I wonder if I'm sending we the right We have dogs on. jumping on us, dogs turning off lights. It's like a madhouse. Right, Astro? Mm -hmm. A dog that likes a tongue kiss. Don't put your tongue in my mouth. And you don't do that with your father. No, you do that with another little girl dog. If you see another little girl poodle, you put your tongue in her mouth, not daddy's mouth. Hang on, I'm trying to find the link. To oh, see. my God. Oh, and to think I could have stayed a hairdresser. <laughs> I'm having a meltdown on the air. <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> just talk, just, I, I can't pay attention and do all this talk. Like, talk, talk about anything. Talk about your fucking daughters. Talk about, about your life. Talk the about shit the out of you on No, come on. I got to figure this out. I punch you all over this Come on. I got to try and figure this out to see if this is working. Oh, Astro, what are we going to do? <laughs> this is a disaster, but everybody loves it. Don't you? Everybody loves to see things go wrong. Outtakes. The Copy and paste. Me a, and this mutt's giving me a bath, a into tongue bath. Google. Oh, I love you. Chrome. Enough. Enough with the tongue kissing, you pervert. Enter name. Oh, God. Enter. At least we laugh. Studio. You know, we say that in Italian. There's a saying, better we laugh than we cry. There's no question about it. So there's a positive way of looking at this mess is it's funny. 
instead of saying, oh my God, it's bad and it's negative and feeling the pain of everything going wrong. You know, the shame and pain is terrible, but I don't have shame or pain about anything, never did. But I think positively and the positive is we're having fun. Astro, stop drinking my water. You can't drink my water, honey. I know you want water. Here, wait a minute. You can't get your head into that deep. It's too deep. Oh, he wants water, Jimmy. Just Astro, you get thirsty, honey? After the show, I'll give you water. A little water. He, this, he knows where water is. He lives huh? here. He knows where water is. Oh, yeah. You know where the water bowl is. You, you just want me to give you attention. Yes, you want attention. Look at the attention he wants. You know, they cut his hair down. He looks terrible. I love him when he's got his long, fluffy hair. Mm, yes, yes, my darling. I'm so glad the show's about yes. Astro. Yes. Now enter the studio. Now enter the studio. Okay, hold on. Hi, little boy. How's my little boy? A watch will never be on the air again. <laughs> They're gonna kick us off the air forever. All right. Well, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Um, hang on. Oh, my producer, Dean. My our producer. Forgive us. For we know not what we do. Forgive us for we know we do. We know not what we do. So, Dean. Where is Dean anyway? I haven't seen Dean. In a, Dean is our producer, by the way. He produces our show. And I haven't seen Dean in a long time. I haven't either, but I have talked to him. You um, talked to Dean? Yeah, I talked to him. I haven't talked to him or seen him. I'm just an insignificant. I am so insignificant. I don't understand why this is like. What are we doing, doing Jimmy? I can't hold it any longer. What do you mean? What, what are we doing? When is it, where are these people? I don't know, honey. We don't have. We can't we worry have, about that. We have we, to talk. We should have. Had, we should have called them and said another time and put a rerun on. No, you don't do that. They're like the other guy's going to be coming on in a minute. So you have us be talking like a chicken without a head, like some mentally ill old bag. You have me yapping away. Like a Yenta from Red Hook. I don't I don't know why it's not. Yeah, I know. Oh, look at this now. It's starting in. Oh, look at this little dippity do. See what I mean? You saw it. I didn't touch it. Look at it. A little spit curl. Oh, how 1920s. Look, a little spit curl. <laughs> look. Oh. Anyway. Anyway, you guys, sorry for all these problems we're trying to work about. I don't know if it's going to work or not, so we'll find out. Uh, cause Juan says he doesn't see him and he says he's there. Um, so I'm not sure what to do with it. Um, but anyway, um, anyway, that's life in the big city. Sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. What can I tell you? Uh, cause it's just not working right for us today. And, um, says Ron can't last much longer. <laughs> oh, so, so they want to know what inspired you to write your movie. What inspired me to write my movie? Randy, stop okay. it. My father used to always say, the Jews didn't do enough to fight the Nazis during the Second World War. For some reason, they, they, they you know, my father was Jewish. They um, were placid. I wrote this because it's about a Jewish woman who's a bookie married to an Italian mafioso and she finds out that there's a way of getting a gift of magic where if she says die, people die. So they, she and her husband decide to go out and protect the uh, Brooklyn Navy Yard and kill all the Nazis. It's a very funny black comedy. But it has a message, and the message is that there were heroes Oh shit! Now our second guest is here, so we might. There as well were bring heroes on. during the Second World War that were Jewish, and I think now with the war in Israel, my movie is very apropos because it gives the Jewish people a feeling when they watch this movie that they are still fighting uh, anti-Semitism and the awfulness that is done to Jewish people. All right, no, we're going to bring on our just guest. a second, just a second. No person, no human being should be victimized by another 
in any war, in any way. It's hideous, it's ridiculous. And if you believe in a great God who created us, he ain't happy with you either. So those of you who hate, kill, and are anti-Semites and or anti-black or anti-gay or anti-anything, you know what? As my character says, die, <laughs> you die. That's terrible. I don't mean that. No, that's the movie. Yeah, All right, Wayne. Hey, hey, Juan, while you're trying to get uh, Warrington, we'll do like a crossover. Let's bring Lane on and let's start talking to Lane because everybody's tired of listening to us talk. Hey, what's up, Lane Hardy? Oh, and look how handsome he is. They're tired of I'm so at, glad you I'm shaved. Thinking, you <laughs> and look how handsome he is because they're sick of looking at our old bag faces. Say something. Let's make sure we can hear you. Oh, no, I can't hear him. Shit. Hey, Juan, uh, do you uh, have your volume on? you have your microphone on? Oh, can my. I sleep? This has just been like a day of fucking problems. Let me see. So, uh, Juan, uh, leave Warrington for a minute and see if we can figure out how come we can't hear Lane. Because I can't hear him on my side. Maybe pop out and bring him back in again. What a day. Is he the Jesus. post? Huh? No. No, he's that guy's not going to be on my age. Um, this is Lane, American Idol winner, and oh. everybody in the chat room came for him, and so we need to like. Uh, what did he win for his looks? No, it's a singing competition. I don't. I don't watch that stuff. So. <laughs> That's I hate, okay. I hate that show. So hey, Juan, it's fixed. Juan, pull Lane out and see if we can figure out why we can't hear him because you can talk to him on the other side. I've never had this many problems ever in a show. We've never had these problems like this. You know, I don't care for those shows that you're talking about. Because they're fixed. They're not all fixed, though. Well, most the majority are fixed. Don't say that. Though. I know that. No, I can say that. Why do you always? You're such a mere. Well, it's Mary not nice Mary. to the guy who's coming on, who's the winner. I'm not of talking show. about his show. You let me finish talking before you interrupt me with your bullshit. All right. We had a friend of ours. I have a friend of mine, who wouldn't sleep with one of the judges, and therefore she was told. You're not going to win. And she, she should have won it. because she has the most fabulous voice in the world. All right? That is true. So I know for a fact that these shows, if you don't play, you don't win. All right? So stop being such a little fruit. Sissy Mary, that's so, afraid so to bring stick Warrington on. Just put Warrington on. Oh, these are my clients. Uh, Warrington, let's, can we hear you? See, we can't hear him either. What the fuck's going on? <laughs> this is insane. this is like a crazy show. I don't know. We've never had a problems like this before. This, this is Neil, gotta, we can't hear either one of the two guests. But this has got to go down as the wackiest show I have ever done. Hey, everybody! This is Warrington Gillette. Juan, can we figure out why we can't hear either one of them? It's got to be something on our side. I think, because I don't know how it wouldn't be able to hear either one of them. Did she do anything with the bottom? No, it wouldn't be us. Everybody, you can hear us, right? Chat room, you can hear us, right? Lane, go settings, audio, make sure the mic selected is the right one. Warrington is here too, Juan, but we can't hear him either. Say something, Warrington. Yeah, he's talking and we can't hear him. I've never had such a fucking mess. <laughs> Oh my gosh! So, uh, how is the weather in Florida? Because we transmit from Florida. Oh, there we go. Oh, what's that? Oh, you don't need a headset though. Like, uh, Lane, go to Warrington is there too. Okay, one. Can, I don't know what to say. Everybody can hear me though. They just can't hear them. So hang on. Ah, oh, there you go. That's one calling Warrington to tell him what to do. Go ahead. We'll keep talking. <laughs> No, I'm not talking. I'm exhausted. <laughs> yeah. He's telling him what he, what to do. So let's see if we can get it figured out. Oh, my gosh. You guys, we're so sorry about all these problems. And it could be Never such a great it. interview because I have questions to ask. Both bo of them. Both of them that are great. So is there, really now? The there we go. We got Lane. We can hear him. You can hear me? I, hey, had yes. I just threw this out. Just It ain't going to work. That's fine. That's fine. It, it works this way. All right. What a nice apartment or house you live in. Oh, while there's we getting more got, into we got, him, we got him too. No, we don't, do we? Yeah. How about now? Can you hear me now? Oh, there we go. Okay, we, we got Warrington. we got you too. All right, so here's what we're gonna do, you guys. Since this show has been a total oh. this show has been a total pig fuck, 
we're going to kind of like meld you both and introduce you all. But first, we got to introduce who you guys are to our audience. So wait one sec. First, we're going to go with Lane. All right, everybody. Now we want to welcome. I, I was using this, but somehow when I went into work. the setting. Okay. All right. But so you be quiet for a minute, right. Warrington. You be quiet for a minute, Warrington. I'm going to Lane Hardy. All right. Everybody, now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell on the biggest technical difficulty show we've ever had in 17 years, the fabulous American Idol season 17 winner, Lane Hardy. Hello and welcome to the show. How you doing? Thank you. Good. Mazel tov. And this is, this is uh, my cool, outrageous co-host, Ron Russell. Say hi. Hi, guys. I have, hi. Such, I have such questions to ask the both of you. And Warrington, you're going to not maybe want to answer my question. That's okay. We're going to introduce Warrington next. So first of all, next up, you guys, on the on the deck, we have author, actor, Warrington Gillette, who also played Jason Voorhees in Friday the 13th Part 2, which, Lane, have you ever seen Friday the 13th? I have. Okay, so he's the killer guy in it. It looks familiar to me. Yeah, I was just looking. I was just <laughs> so Warrington, <laughs> welcome to the show. And we have, there he is in his Yeah, I like that wall. Um, and, and, and yeah, I, just, I just jumped out of Crystal Lake to join you, so I'm here. It looks perfect. So uh, we also have a chat room filled with people who are waiting for both of you guys. So please just say hi to the chat room, everybody. Hey. I want to ask. Oh, and then we go. Wait, and let's introduce the two of them. So Lane meet Warrington and Warrington meet Lane, musician and actor. I think I'm having a breakdown. <laughs> And we get the fucking show yes, started. Go. I want Stop with all your hysterical faggot screaming. Okay, Mary? <laughs> oh, I Just hate go. Uh, let's Listen, go. Listen, Lane, did you win because of your looks or because of your talent? And do you think your show is a fix? I didn't win by any of that. I won by God. <laughs> there you go. He's got a southern accent. Yes, you're right. from Louisiana, right? I'm from southern Louisiana, southeastern. Oh, oh Louisiana, that's another planet. That's another. Uh, Actually, you and Tyrus. I love Tyrus is from Louisiana. Right. But seriously, do you think you won because of your voice? Be honest. I'm being honest. You do. No, he said oh. God. He won because God had him win. You didn't, you didn't listen. What happened? He said God. He won because of God. Who's God? God. My oh, God. God. God <laughs> God made you. Um, tell God. Everything, everything I do, everything that comes out on my mouth, whatever I get, well, my accomplishment. Tell God to make my movie a success. <laughs> no, I think I it's terrific. a little help from the up above. So hang Seriously. on. So let's... I'm still interviewing him. Stop it now. You're, you're, you've gone mad. I'm not mad. You have gone completely mad. You're not in control. Now stop it. I've got it covered. Go put lipstick on or something. <laughs> yeah, right. Go. You're out of control. That's what he's saying. Meanwhile, Lane, you're very handsome and you have a good voice and you want on this show. Now, do you have a girlfriend, a wife? Are I you, do not. Are you gay? No, sir. Okay. So, <laughs> you're not, what did he say? He said, no, sir. No, sir. Right. Neither am I. Right. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> Where, where do you think you're going to go with your career? And what sort of singing do you do? I couldn't tell you where I'm going, but uh, I'm in good hands. So I'll go wherever I'm going to be going, you know. But so hang on, hang on. Let me let. So you guys, Lane Hardy's a Southern country blues singer. He was on season 16 of American Idol. He made it through a, a little bit, but he didn't make it all the way. And then he came back on season 17 as kind of like a fluke because he was helping somebody else. And they made him. They asked him to audition, and he won. I watched all your music videos and everything that you did on the show, uh, prepping for you coming on the show. And and we've had on this show from American Idol, which you're so young, you don't even know who they are, because they're more from the beginning. But we've had Nikki McKibben, Constantine Maroulis, Stefano Langoni, John Stevens, and Bucky Covington all came on the show. They're from like the first ten seasons, and mm -hmm. uh, I was always a big fan of the show. Um, and so I've enjoyed it a lot. And, and one thing that a lot of people want to know is because our audience loves Adam Lambert. And I know on the show, like you were mentored by Adam Lambert. You did, I think, I don't know what movie you did. What song did you do? Fat Bottom Girls or something? And you yeah. did a version of it. So they all want to know how was it working with Adam Lambert? He's great to work with. He definitely has that stage presence experience. Uh, just he, he's ever since he's been on the show, he's always had that like, that image of, of 
stage presence. And he was with uh, Queen for, and I don't know if he still is. I don't want to like tell anybody false information, but he did. He was he was great to work with, and uh, yeah, so I could say. Uh, good I, I think that's freaking like awesome. They froze. They did. He's not frozen. Orange and frozen. Okay, but he's well, not frozen. He's um, so so real quick, Lane. We have a we have a we have a a, a fan who's a huge, biggest Adam Lambert fan on the planet. She's in the chat room. <laughs> And her name is B. Claudia, and she's actually in Germany. Um, just give a shout out to B. Claudia because she was like sending me all the videos and things mm -hmm. all day today. You hey, know, B. Claudia, so, how are you? So, you so how excited that she was. I want to ask Warrington a question before I We'll start. go back and forth. Yes, okay. Warrington, do you yes, think sir. you are the grandson <laughs> of Post Serial, correct? Uh, I'm the, the great grandson because my great mom was the granddaughter. Do you think Mar-a-Lago is worth twelve million dollars? Eighteen million dollars? How much? No, it's, it, how much it's a you? joke. It's a joke. And uh, uh, there's a house today. Somebody just went to contract for it on this little island, Tarpon Island. It's sort of in Palm Beach. They've gone into contract for one hundred eighty-seven million. What so. What would you That's not me? even but uh, two, three acres, two, three acres, 187 million. What is this Judge Angeron thinking to value one of the finest homes in the world at 18 million? Actually, I mean, there's an empty, there's an empty lot on the, on the sea going for 200 million. I mean, come on. At Mar-a-Lago, and I could build a pretty good case for it, it's worth a billion. You work in real estate also, besides acting, right? Don't you also do real so estate? So please tell the yeah. audience. Please tell our I audience. know. I know across the United States, wherever you want to talk about the United States, I know. So you can go from Bel Air, Holmby Hills, Malibu. But let me tell you something. There is no house in America worth a billion. Excuse me. No. <laughs> I don't care. I mean, I think this ticket of $187 million is uh, is a record for uh, Palm Beach. Oh, so wait yeah. a minute. Let's make it very clear, please, for me. There is nothing on the strip that is eighteen million dollars. Am I correct? No, nothing. No, nothing on on the strip. Maybe tell your your followers it's called South Ocean Boulevard. No, there's nothing on the ocean for that kind of money. So I actually grew up. I actually grew up in West Palm Beach on Washington Road, right across the street. Um, yes, uh, right across the street, and we would drive by the Meriwether Post House every day and see the glass on top of the wall. And my parents used to get to go to parties there um, when I was like younger. Oh. So it was fun. Um, and I was in Mar-a-Lago with a friend of mine when Trump just bought it, and he was ordering memberships to the country club for fifty thousand. Would you believe? Well, that? let me tell you how absurd the story goes. Marjorie Post had had a. Uh, a, a notable husband, E.F. Hudden, she had about five, but anyhow, six, whatever. She had a famous actress daughter, Dina Merrill, from E.F. Hudden. Dina Merrill gives the house to the United States government, and the United States government was so brilliant, they gave it back, and they said, this is a turkey, we don't want it. What? And the U.S. government goes, oh, it's too vulnerable, it's surrounded by too much water, we just don't want it, we'd have to have too many people around to mow the lawn. So then Dina Merrill then will find I'll auction the damn house. So she auctioned it and the house goes for six million. The beach from Jack Massey went for one million. A lot of Marjorie personal effects went for another million. Trump goes in the deal at eight million and that house is worth a billion. <laughs> yeah. So you would know better than What do you think it's actually worth? Well, look, you do the math. They're about 26 yeah. acres, and it's oh, it's yeah. a block from the ocean uh, to, to the intercoastal, from the ocean to the lake. That's why that's what Mar-a-Lago means, from the sea to the lake, Mar-a-Lago. So what do you do the math? 26 acres, what is that worth if it was just dirt? Forget the, the, the world mass that we sit on. It. If there are 55 bedrooms, I mean, my mother grew up in the tower that's sticking up there. But even the dirt would be worth 500 million. Yes. If one or two acres is where on the ocean is worth 100, 200 million. 
I like love it. All right. Let me tell you something. There's a top. Everybody in the United States knows who this man is. His name is Ken Griffin. He's running the most successful hedge fund in the world called Citadel. Citadel moved from Chicago to Miami. Okay. He decided to buy about six houses in Palm Beach, bulldoze them all down. He has a parcel on the ocean. He's the largest landowner in Palm Beach. He's building a billion dollar house for his mother. <laughs> no, what I mean? Wait, we, gotta, we have to go back and forth. I'm going to go back and forth. Let me finish wording. It's a masterpiece. So the, the whole conversation that a judge estimated it to be worth 18 when houses on the ocean are consistently getting sold for 100. That's like telling me a, ma a mansion in Malibu uh, on the beach in Malibu went for 1 million. A mansion. That's not possible. <laughs> well, we're looking in Boca and a three bedroom little house with a pool, a million bucks. Okay, well, there you are. So, how could that be only worth 18 million? So, you think the judge was wrong in getting that number? Maybe he was stoned or something. No, the judge completely was wrong. And I don't understand. I've lost faith in my country with such a charade going on. But thank God for an appellate court to say, excuse me, well, let's reassess this fine you're talking okay. about. Okay, let's go to Lane. We'll be back to you, Warren. All right, Lane. Lane. I want to go. So first of all, so so what was it like? What was it like winning? So you won American Idol. I know you've had some you had some problems with the record label. Like everybody has some problems with uh, 19 Entertainment. I've got uh, tons of friends that actually were on American Idol and and they got signed and then you know they ended their relationship after a little bit of time. So how was it working with them and, and how is it now for you as you're an indie artist and, and you got to like kind of go on your own without them? Because your fan base is still huge. It wasn't like I would never talk bad about any, any of the people I worked with when I was working with them or when I was first getting started with them, you know. Um, me being country, like the country genre, they're they're like um, they're based out of L.A. Yes. So, they, I'm not saying L.A. or California doesn't know anything about the country genre, but the country genre is based in Nashville. You know, you're right. They, they don't. You're know. right. They don't. They know. don't know anything about. It. You can if you want to. Yeah, we'll say it. But. <laughs> no, it's funny because they yeah. had a few Kelly Pickler, Scotty McCready. There's a few American Idol like alums, you know, who did okay. And oh, and Carrie Underwood, you know, they all did really well. Um, they didn't really have too many men, uh, male singers in country that have done really well. You have an off like a a superstar like look your teeth are beautiful you're gorgeous like everybody like thinks you're really cute and you can sing and you can perform um like i know i i read that you toured europe and didn't you play for the troops in some country and uh yeah, you played I went to abu dhabi to the air to the to a, a abu base dhabi? wow yeah. um, Me and my, my band from home and we've got to play them some music hmm. I like. I think that's super cool. So then you got to do that. You also played on the Bachelor, the 2020 National Tree Lighting Ceremony. So you you've had a lot of exposure. So what's going on with with new music now? Do you have anything new coming out? Yes, uh, this year is a year for for me to get things recorded and and put out there again. And I'm gonna have some new good stuff. I'm I'm happy with the stuff that I'm creating, and I'm I'm excited. Yeah. Good, good. Let me tell you one thing about our show. The reason why we're the number one podcast in the world, by the way, is because we are honest. We tell it like it is. We say the things that people think and are afraid to say. So mm -hmm. please, on our show, say whatever you like, curse, do whatever you want, because it's an honest show. Never be afraid to speak the truth. Because today we have a government that's stopping us from having freedom of speech, and we don't like it. Mm. So be free. This is a free. This is a free place to be. And the same thing goes to you, Warrington. 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 A oh, Warrington, like like Warrington, like <laughs> we we have friends that live in Warrington. <laughs> oh, that's in Pennsylvania, right? Or where's that? Pennsylvania. Yes, in Pennsylvania. So one more question for Lane. Going going back. Um, if you did you did you enjoy the experience because I, I I watched the video today of you not really wanting to go on season seventeen you know that you went on to play guitar for your friend and and uh, uh, and they kind of like 
Uh, they, they, they nudged you to do it. Like, are you happy that you actually did it? Yes, I am happy. And I actually did it. I, did, I, did, I didn't see your performance. Could you tell me a little bit about it? I'm in the dark here. So what show was it? What did you sing? And what was your rating? I mean, who went nuts over you? Everybody, right? So I went on it twice. The first time I went on it, I was a junior in high school. Oh, was, really? Yes, yeah, so I graduated high school in 2018. I'm 23. 23. But, so you were a baby. So <laughs> I was, okay, I went the first year. I didn't make it, but halfway through that first season, when they came back, they were affiliated with ABC because they were with, uh, I, I think, Fox before, and they took a little hiatus, a little break, you know. And they came back and got a different provider. So I went back the first season of that with Ga like Gabby Barrett went on there and a few other people that are that are in the country world and all over the place doing their own thing were on it. And I got halfway through, but I went back home for about a year. And a friend of mine called me, and she asked me to uh, if if I could go over there with her to the audition. She was going to audition to play guitar for her. So I went. It was in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and we went. And I know. wow. Yeah. Um, what song did you sing that made you win? Oh, he sang a bunch. I sang, you have to sing. His, his, his mouth? I'm asking him. He's the interviewer. I know, but he had like 10 or 12 songs. I don't give sing. a shit. I want him to speak, not you. I listened to you all day, all of my life. <laughs> Enough of you already. Lane, what <laughs> song did you sing? Uh I'm going to just tell you some songs I sang because I sang 10 or 12. This is the one that you won for. Well, you have to you have to come, go through rounds till you – like it goes from top it, – it's out of like a certain – of the whole country. They do stops, every, big cities, you know. And then once you get past that, they you go to Hollywood and you do uh, three rounds, four rounds until you get to the top um, – I don't know. I think it's 50, 40. And then after top 40, it's top 20 – Five or 20 and then 14 18 14 12 10 8 7 4 it just depends on who gets put out or whatever so well our very good friend lily mcleod she should have won but she didn't and she sang Alabaster. she was on x factor she sang alabaster box she is probably in my opinion one of the greatest singers i have ever heard in my life she is incredible and rumor had it that she wouldn't sleep with one of the judges and therefore lost. Actually, that's what she, she came off on she came on our show and just told us she wouldn't and, sleep with, with the head person who was not one of the judges on your show um, anymore, one of the original right. judges of American Idol, and that she said that when she turned him down, she got eliminated the next week. And <laughs> if you hear her, and if you hear her sing. You would say she's better than Barbara Streisand, okay? She can hit A's like nobody. She's a, everybody out there look at, watching or listening to our show, please go to your, whatever you go to, your phones or whatever the hell, and pull up Lily McLeod and listen to her sing What About the Children, and you will cry as you're listening to her singing. So your judges were- So wait a minute. So do you think it's fair that you won? That you deserve to have won. I don't think I deserved anything. Nobody should feel like they deserve anything. But I am very glad I won. And no, I mean, you feel confident. You, once I won, I'm I won now. So I mean, yeah, I, I I've won. I'm yeah. happy with what it was. Are you confident? No, my point that I'm trying to get to is being an actor, I know many actors who really don't think they can act, but yet they act. Do you think you can sing? Is my question. You I believe, believe, I you believe I in yourself. In myself that I can sing. That's that's what's going to make you famous. As long as you have positive thinking and you believe in what you do, yes, you'll sir. do it well. My I guitar started, playing. I only I started playing guitar when I was eight years old, and from there on out, when I was fourteen, I started singing. At fourteen, I've been playing guitar, lead guitar, since I was eight. So you'll be the next Elvis Presley, Warrington. I had a friend years ago who said to me, Ron. Do you want to be a walker? I said, what? He said, do you want to be a walker? He was one of Palm Springs' most famous walkers. I then found out that a walker is a handsome young man who walks elderly rich women into parties. Now, were you ever asked to be a walker being from the island? <laughs> 
You, did you ever walk? Oh no, now his volume is gone. I would say even worse. I'd say the older, older wealthy grand dames, uh, they wanted the next stage of being a walker. They wanted to be <laughs> your full on, uh, yeah, your full on lover. <laughs> They want to seduce you. Are you kidding? They want, they want him to do yeah, that. Yeah, I too. used I used to go to a lot of. I lived in Florida, so I used to go to a lot of parties on the island. And um, this one lady, I won't mention her name, but quite famous. Uh, somebody said, "Would you walk her into a party?" My friend was a very famous composer and piano player, and I said, "What does that mean?" Now he came to my house in Boca, and he seated in front of me on a chair and he crossed his leg and there was a hole in the bottom of his shoe. And I said to myself, that that's impossible. Nobody has holes in their shoes. So I said to him, I said, is it lucrative walking these women to these parties? And he said, oh yes, very lucrative. I said, then can I suggest that you get new shoes? Because you have a hole in it, you're going to make a hole in your sock. <laughs> so we became friends. In the men's room. Then, then oh. walk, this woman became very public and very famous for disappearing. They kidnapped her. And I walked her to a party. You know who I'm talking about now. I'm, I walked her to a party at, at this wonderful home. And yeah, she said to me something else. And I said, honey, I'm gay. It never happened. It's never going to happen. But I'll take you home. I took her home and I went back to the party. So but, hang on, I want to do a little, let me do a little bragging for yes, Warrington great, real great. quick. So you guys, besides knowing Warrington as Jason in Friday the 13th Part 2, and we're going to talk about what he has up on these, because everybody's asking what these things are. We're going to talk about him in just one second, you guys. But he was also in uh, a movie called Teddy to Me. with with. Uh, we've had everybody in it on the show. with Lisa Wilcox, C.J. Graham, Felissa Rose, James Balsamo, Penny Dreadful. He did a movie called Time Walker about an alien buried in King Tut's tomb terrorizing a college campus with she Jerry Belafonte, who's a good friend of ours, and um, and he also did a TV series. I got funded by a big weapons dealer, uh, Adnan Khashoggi, back in the day, and he had the yacht Nabila. But anyway, Adnan Khashoggi was very well known, and uh, this fellow went and raised the money from him to make that movie. So also then, you... Oh, you know, late late you late late. I was late. when I'm doing that. You were in a documentary or a movie or something called Inducted, Berkshire's UFO. So, like, were you inducted by a UFO and that's why you were on it? Or what? why were you yeah, on it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, no, like, how, because I didn't understand it. So explain it to us real quick. Well, I'm not, what, 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 are you, what are you reading now? Is that a, I'm not sure where you saw that. I oh, that was on it. IMDb that like you're in a documentary about, like, UFO he abductions. Believes, uh, he believes. I want to ask you another question before we lose time. Now you're, time. you're the great the great grandson of Post Serial, correct? Yeah, yeah. Did they leave you? Unfortunately, any, there were too many hands in that pie before I came around. But wait a second, did you get any of the millions? No. She listen to this. If you want to hear crazy stories, talking about rich women with their lovers, their husband. My great grandfather's name was Joe Davies. He was a lawyer. He was an ambassador to Russia. He was very key at, with FDR in, uh, in negotiations with Stalin and had mission to Moscow. Anyhow, Marjorie Post, listen to this, wanted to give him a gift so he'd feel good about himself because he's married to a full on heiress, okay? She wanted to give him a million dollars of founder shares of Philip Morris. <laughs> Now, you, you understand what time period we're talking about, like, uh, you know, 30s, 40s, 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 okay. You, could you, and he says, no, he says, I can't accept such a gift from a, a wealthy woman as yourself, even though you're my wife, I couldn't accept such a gift. Could you imagine, had he accepted that gift, it would be worth billions today. A today. Philip Morris founder shares? <laughs> I, like I, I interviewed um, names, the, the, the actor, the famous Academy Award actor I interviewed. Um, what's her name's uh, husband? The actor. Uh, oh, Jesus <laughs> yeah, right. Christ. Now my mind is going. I don't I'm know who you're talking about. 
I think I'm at John Nagamore. Who did you mention who, who lived in? Who was your relative? She lived in the. I don't know, Dina Merrill, Cliff Robertson, George yeah, Cliff Robertson. Cliff Robertson. I interviewed. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, I, I do have ESP, but go ahead. Right. If you watch my interview, I said to Cliff Robinson, I heard Dana Merrill was a bitch. And he said, no, she was not a bitch. She only played bitchy parts. I said, see, right. how, see how Hollywood, whatever. It seems to me that she didn't wind up with a ton of money either. Uh, judging from what Cliff uh, said to me, I drove Cliff to a house where he was staying because his car broke down after the, our interview, and we had a private talk. And um, I, I don't remember the specific, specific, but Dina Merrill was screwed out of a lot of stuff. Sure. I mean, uh, 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 I, don't know, I don't know how Marjorie's estate got got uh, so whacked up with between, you know, all of her children. You know, I, I just don't know. But at one time, they're calling her one of the richest women in the world. I mean, you know, this was a major fortune. And you would think that everybody would get an equal amount. Nobody did. I don't remember what he said, but he, but she was not happy. That's why she couldn't wait to get away from, from the post people. Well, she was a gorgeous woman. I know she'd done some great movies. Yep. Uh, Deanie, they called her Deanie. And, uh, oh, my goodness. Uh, every time I saw her, I thought, man, this is a... Gorgeous, classy, elegant, whoo, elegant woman. That's right. Okay, so yeah. hold on. I want to go back to Lane for a second, and and I want I want people to actually hear what he sounds like. Um, yes, and I so would I like actually to have because everybody in the chat room is like loving uh, yeah. both of you guys coming on, and since we're doing this kind of like mashup, so first I want to know who are some of your biggest influences, you know, as a as a, as as a, as a country artist and maybe they're not even country singers but who are some of your biggest influences in the country music genre well i can tell you the first one elvis for sure you know, what you got compared How to about a patsy lot? klein do you do like patsy klein i do but i don't listen to her every single day you know what i mean but i do i've heard i've i like her music so I'd like to hear you sing I Go Out Walking. I love that song. <laughs> hey, there's a lot of times a male artist will cover a female you, song that does you, sound good. You do, you do that song? No. I would do it. Why don't you? It's a great lyric. I go out I walking after me. I will it's for you. Moonlight. If you hear me do it, then you'll know it's for you. It's a good song. Oh, then we'll bring you back and we'll let you, no, let you bring a, it on. A, a, many people have done the cover on it. So you guys, it's a good song. Lane released his first album album in 2021 called Here's to Anyone. I, I watched a bunch of your videos, you guys. If you go to lanehardymusic.com, make sure you spell Lane, L-A-I-N-E, uh, H-A-R-D-Y, music.com. He's got a bunch of videos on there. But I picked Memorize You because I just love the song. Um, so what I want well, you to do, big, what I want you to do is introduce it. We're going to play the video real quick, and then we'll come back. And then when we come back after we talk about the song, we're going to Bloody Social. So go ahead and... Uh, Oh, okay. Introduce it for us. Introduce it for us, Lane. Uh, so this song is a, a written song from Nashville. There's three writers on it, I believe. And um, I love d being able to record other people's art, you know. So it's it's a pitch. It was a pitch to me from writers in Nashville. And I was like, I'll cut it. So I cut it, and this is what it is. And it's, it's a really catchy, catchy song. So. All right, everybody. So this is Lane Hardy. The name of the song is Memorize You Enjoy. We'll be right back in like three minutes. Hey, everybody. That's So that's Lane Hardy, Memorize You. The song's fantastic. Um, you can find out. You can watch all his music videos. He's got a website that's set up that you can see all the videos, so you don't have to Google them on YouTube. It's lanehardymusic.com. You can also... Follow him on Instagram at the Lane Hardy. I give you a bit of advice without you getting upset. Oh do yeah. Not, do not have a beard. Okay. <laughs> Handsome people do not have beards. That's what my mama said. My papa and my mama and my my mama hates my dad's beard. It's like this long. Wait a minute. <laughs> no, unattractive people have beards. Yes, like me. Attractive people don't. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I, I think it's true though. I think like you without have the a beard, beard, Warrington. No, he doesn't have a beard. No, uh, beard. Lane, Lane you look so. You look. I mean, like you without the beard. Just too handsome to cover up your face. Yeah, I agree. Listen to me. I agree. And you look sweeter this way, and you can sing. And I think you're going to have a very good career. Thank you. I think, I think so too. I'm, I think everybody's waiting for the new music to come yeah. out. Um, and I think. But sing that. Let me hear a little bit of it. Give me the couple of lines. I go out. I go out walking. Let me hear. You won't do it a cappella. Why? <laughs> well, learn well enough to sing it fluently. <laughs> I go out walking after. No, 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 no! Don't do that to him. You can't make people. Oh, I walk in. <laughs> I'm um, like Moses. I'm telling you, it's like yeah. the picture of Moses. Like it's white. He has white beard. It's he's 54 and it's white. Holy, what's that? His father. Oh, right. His beard. His mom doesn't like it. <laughs> Well, when he's sleeping, <laughs> she should cut it while he's No, sleeping. don't you dare. Like Samson, that ain't going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks it'll be good. All right, so now we're going to go back to Warrington. So Warrington, you guys, has a book. Um, it's called yes. Bloody Social Murder in Palm yeah. Beach, which is also going to be – I'm going to talk about it, and then you can correct me. It's, it's uh, basically a book that's also going to be a movie based on a true story of Warrington's life where he believes yes. that his father was poisoned by his – by his stepmother, and uh, and and then he, he basically wrote a whole lot of book about it. it. No. Let, let Warrington tell us the story, us Warrington. Oh, no, you- I, I, I'll I'll keep it tight, but you you are aware of the fact that the Friday Thirteenth brand for forty five years is revolving around Jason getting revenge for the death of the mother. Yes. Every all the memorabilia I signed to so and so, the lane, love you. Uh, I killed for mommy. Everybody, so I'm very aware of, of the essence of that brand. So now Friday the 13th comes around in my life. My father has lunch and drops dead after lunch. Well, this is a horrific thing for you to lose a parent. Everybody out there clearly understands what I'm talking about. I observed all the circumstantial evidence. In the wake of his oh, death, God damn you! I and then, then I came to a conclusion that the wife, who who is this major heiress, uh, uh, whacked him on Friday thirteenth. So therefore, a, a film project, a screenplay, was created in the wake of his death. And it is a story revolving around a black widow who kills her husband, and then the son, who is a sympathetic vigilante Hamlet-like character, is going to get revenge of the death of his father. But wait a second. What makes you think that she poisoned him? And why poison? At lunch? Did she cook the lunch, or did you go okay, to Well, the food? circumstances were very bizarre. On Friday 13th, she invites this uh, pedophile priest to come over to the estate, <laughs> have a little lunch in the garden. Oh, at 2.30... He drops dead. He goes upstairs and drops dead. Well, I'm the kind of guy to say, well, if you had lunch and dropped dead, I'm the kind of guy to say, well, what was in the lunch? Wait, didn't they do an autopsy? No, one was required by law, but this is Palm Beach. And so people there above the law, like Jeff Epstein, they do what the hell they want. I I fly down from New York to his funeral. He wasn't even present at his own funeral. Well, where's the body? Oh, the body. We had to get that out of town. He's already gone. Like what? So if you do a little research, the easiest way to kill somebody outside at, at a lunch in your garden is you give them a little oleander cocktail. Oleander is illegal in California. It's the most dangerous flower in the world. You put a little oleander in a drink, somebody consumes it, boom, they have a heart attack. You're kidding. She calls 911 at, at, uh, at 10 o'clock at night. He's dead at 2.30. Like, What? And then I also, I also and, no, and then to top it off, she goes on a cruise with her new lover to Monte Carlo. Like what? She's been married to my dad thirty years. What? She goes on a cruise with a new lover, comes back to town, and they think it's funny. Then she sent me some box of pots and pans in the wake of his death. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. I've had enough now. I'm not litigious. So I pick up the phone. I call my friend Richard Johnson, who's work, who was famous for Page Six of the New York Post. It's become an above the fold story. Jason Warrington, you know, star Friday 13th. 
Oh, he he's gonna get even with his stepmother. He's oh, he's making a movie. He's making a movie. Look at this. Here I happen to have it in my hand. Look, this went nationwide. Jason's revenge. Here's the father, there's the mother, the stepmother, and there's the cat. A little you know, mountain lion. I've heard so some, look, I've so heard life, look, if you take a hit in life, get up swinging, make a piece of art. This is what the oleander looks like. Oh, oh. <laughs> That's an oleander. There's the father. There's the black widow. That's the Michelle Pfeiffer, the Sharon Stone character. So write, create the piece of art. Meanwhile, in New York alone, uh, they covered this about 20 stories to the New York Post. This happens, this happens, this happens, that happens. So then long story short, I said, you know what? I, I'm going to now introduce the book first. We're going to do the book. The book is fabulous. I, it's self-published. Amazon is going to distribute it worldwide. And we're going to great, find great success with the book. And then that will segue into the movie that you see there. Bloody social. There's the black widow. Yep. And here's the vigilante. I'd love to play myself, but if if, if not, I'm you know I'll, I'll get lame here. <laughs> but we're making a fabulous piece you know, of art. You know what? I know so many stories about the island, and oh. and it's very very hush hush. Nobody ever repeats it because no. my friend the Walker, he knew everything. He was like a, a gossip. And he said to me, you could witness a murder, and you never did if you're on the island. It's a very secretive society of people. All those beautiful women that I used to see at lunch at uh, Taboo, Taboo, I think, the restaurant, yeah, right? Yeah, it's pretty Taboo. open. It closed, they, it's real they, open. They, they were all screwing everybody. Everybody was screwing everybody. And who was gay and who was a dyke? I mean, it's amazing. And I thought that little island that I love so much that I would kill to live on, I don't think I would. No, look, it's a fairy tale. And for you to say maybe 75% of the wealth in America is on this island. It's a barrier reef eight miles long. That's it. It has got about 8,000 residents, okay? They're highly racist, most discriminatory place in the world, Okay. Bloody so social, beautiful. Bloody so social beautiful. is coming, and this is going to be where the blackest hearts that are thriving and the beautiful white sandy beaches and the blue waters of the Atlantic Ocean are going to run blood red. When, when is the book actually coming out? Yeah. Oh, it's going to come late spring, late summer. I'm polishing now all the acts, and uh, the revenge happens in Act 3. I've made a huge effort to, to really create this story. Lane, I spent 10 years thinking of this, creating it, writing a screenplay. I had readings in New York. I got a feedback from audience. Every convention I do, people all say, Warrington, what are you working on now? I interface with the audience. They give me support back. Keep writing, keep writing, keep writing. The screenplay then was the basis of creating the book. And listen to this. If you could get 5,000 copies sold, to your fans, to your friends, people like yourself, you become on the New York Times bestseller list. Wow. This book, okay, the average the average person out there globally is going to root for Jason to get Absolutely. revenge for the loss of his father. They already love the fact, get revenge for the mother. Now for the father, and, and they're going to really root for him to whack these conspirators. <laughs> are, are you what a great tie-in though that's a great tie-in are you still, are you still living in florida yeah yeah are you still in palm beach i'm in palm beach i have an office on worth having hold it, hold it jimmy and i will be in florida at the end of may let's have lunch at taboo i it may not be open by then because the the original owner kind of closed it he he couldn't deal with the new rent so another group come in by the building and then bought the name from him, Franklin it's Mar it's uh, it's Marco. Franklin it's Marco. It's not going to have the same elegance and classy. And I, it was a very classy. Yeah, it? It's going to be beautiful. We go somewhere else. Yeah, okay. well, we just like it because because I grew up down there. My best, my actually my best friend growing up all through college 
Uh, his name's Brian Wolf. He's in real estate, but he grew up across the street from the Kennedy House, like in those houses right across the street. And used to hang out at the Kennedy House, and so we had a lot of fun. So let's go back to Lane well, for a Renee, second. And I may we, we may be having lunch with Renee Taylor. You know who she is? From the nanny. From the nanny. Yeah, we're doing a movie with because her. I want to take her up to Palm Beach to, to lunch. So we'll all be together. Uh, there's a lot of people from Nashville that are here, the the Curry family. But anyhow, uh, Sly Stallone just moved here from LA. Yeah, heard. There with your governor out there, it said, no, 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 no mas, no mas. So him, beautiful wife, all the beautiful daughters, they've all moved to Palm Beach. And so a lot of us. I love Florida, so I can tell people in this country all day to come to Florida. <laughs> yeah, I know, absolutely. So wait, go back to Lane for a second, because he mentioned like Lane could play. Lane, have you ever actually considered acting? Like we all do movies. Um, we're not really. Ron used to sing, but I'm not musically inclined at all. Have you ever thought of like being an actor? Because you shoot music videos, and that's basically like a movie. Yeah, I can do it. <laughs> that's what I, I like, like it because that I. Like. Like. I had this conversation, right? I'm going to get this movie funded, but I'm going to be successful with the book first. Then this is going to be a major film, maybe in a you know five, six, seven million dollar indie film. And you definitely sing a song for us, you know, out in the horse country, out of the polo story. There'll be a party, and you'll be singing a song. Yeah, absolutely. No, See, that would be. Fun. I love bringing people together. I know. I think it's really cool, and I think that you you kind of like the way you talk. I don't know if you ever saw. Uh, Fast and Furious 3, Tokyo Drift, but that guy who's also on like CSI or one of those shows, uh, like you kind of remind me of a young version of him. And I could see, I could actually see you like doing that. Um, you know, so you have a fun. great. And I want to say something because you guys don't know us, but Jimmy and I are married. We've been married for over 10 years. And the thing that the people love the most about our show is when we, wait a minute, is when we fight. We fight all the time. So the every week we pick a fight and I get mean to him and I say terrible things, but it's all in acting. It's not real. But we make people, and they're crazy people out there. They love to see fighting. So we, <laughs> we give everybody a little bit of something. I think it's terrific. Well, everybody's excited with the Mike Tyson fight coming. So, you know. People so who do you think, okay, so who do, who's going to win, Mike Tyson or Logan Paul? Or Jake Paul? Which Mike, Paul is Mike, it? Jake Paul Mike, or Mike Tyson? I've been seeing it because uh, I think he's got a he's got a punch. It's going to hit you like a crowbar. With, with Wait, a who did you say, Lane? Do you think Mike Tyson's going to win or Paul? What is it, Jake Paul or Logan Paul? Which one is it? Jake Paul. Jake Paul. Okay, you think Jake Paul's going to win, Lane? I get ads on Facebook. It's just like a, a video of Mike Tyson and shirt, and it says "Sign Your Name" or something like that on it. Yes, so all the just the confidence Mike has. I don't know. There's no, I I couldn't tell you. I think that the uh, that 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 Jake Paul's got the he's got the age thing, you know, because he's like thirty years younger. But Mike Tyson is in good shape, and I, I mean, he's going to preserve energy, and he's just going to walk around. He's going to walk around, walk around, walk around. If just he hit connects, him once. <laughs> if he connects with one of his shots, I'm sorry, anybody will go down now. I think he's so a old guy, 27. He's got so much experience. He's going to know how to preserve energy and just walk around and wait till he connects with a big punch. And don't, and don't play the age card because my father boxed uh, socially, and my father had a fist like a cinder block. It's true. He used to put it through the wall a lot when he fought with my mother. Boom, make a big hole as big in the wall. My father died at 80 years old. And he could still box and had that cinder block fist. So let's not put the technique. age card, folks. He's got to get the technique down. Just because you're 80, don't mean you become uh, Wait. a weakling. Warrington, how tall are you? I'm 6'1". You know, I'm, you know, I'm yeah, up you're there. Good. Yeah, you're a big dude. And Lane, how tall I are you? I all my coveralls for you boys. Yes. Lane, how tall are you? I'm like 5'10". Okay, so you're a big kid too. You're a big boy too. Because I, I just think that I, I'm definitely want to watch the fight with them, and I don't, I'm not even a fight watcher. How old? So is he? Just put some money down, and he got. Uh, I believe he got twenty to one odds, but Mike Tyson has to knock out the dude in the first round. Twenty to one price. I don't think he's going to do it in the first round, though. Uh, like, like I mean, maybe. <laughs> 
Well, I don't know. I don't have money to bet on those kinds of things anyway. <laughs> no, my, 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 I think it's going to be like that Floyd Mayweather fight, fight where he they kind of play around for five rounds because that helped pay for it. You know, right. there's a lot of people. And then he's gonna bite. Money. Then he's gonna bite Jake Paul's ear off, and then he's gonna knock him out. Uh, <laughs> and then let's say maybe in the fifth round, Mike's gonna say, "Okay, I'm. Uh, that's it. I'm gonna take him out I, now." I really think that Mike Tyson uh, psychs himself up, where he almost becomes inhuman, not human. Right. Anymore. He becomes a muscle. I believe that it's his mind that's gonna win, not his fist. So, so you guys too, real quick. You can follow uh, Warrington Gillette. He's on Instagram at Jason the number two Warrington Gillette. Um, you can follow Lane Hardy on Instagram. It's the Lane Hardy. If you want to find out more about Bloody Social Movie, you can go to bloodysocialmovie.com with Lane Hardy. His website is lanehardymusic.com. Um, we'll look forward to new music from Lane. Hopefully, by the end of the year. By the end of the year, will we make something? You think? For sure. At least a single. Follow, follow kind of, yeah. Yeah, so follow him on his different socials. Uh, with Warrington Gillette, you guys, um, uh, you want to make sure you get the book when it comes out. When it's actually out, we'll have him back on the show so we can actually uh, uh, help promote the book and uh, see what we can do oh, with the movie. That would, be, that would be great. Now, Lane, on the website, if you scroll down to the bottom of the website, I wrote and produced three songs. I wrote all the lyrics, create the music. We recorded it in studios in uh, Times Square in New York. Okay. So let's, we'll come up with some great new lyrics for the new journey where, you know, I kill for daddy. I'm calling for daddy. I love my daddy. I'm going for daddy. All right. These conspirators are going to go down because I love my daddy. Yeah. We also, we also want to we thank you guys for being such good sports Our because patient. we had so many technical problems. We Honestly, yeah. we've been on the air for 17 years and we've never had as many problems as we had today and um, i'm glad to know that you're not selfish either one of you because you're sharing time and we thank you so much for doing that otherwise i would have to do the whole show me beating up jimmy <laughs> <laughs> you know, that would be oh, great. Great. When you have a new you get lane in the movie and then i can say hey man i knew this guy back in the beginning after you know he was on uh idol whatever and lane, you have my you have my email so when the new single's ready and you come back we'll bring you on by yourself again and uh we'll promote the new single because you're a great sport and a great talent and so remember, both of you guys thank you lane remember i go out walking after at midnight, midnight out in the <laughs> moonlight i won't forget that looking for you there you go. All right, you guys. Thank you so much. We'll All right, guys. Oh, I'll Bye. see you on the play. I Bye. can't play. Bye. 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 We'll see you. Yay. Thanks, everybody. Very nice. So can turn out to you. So yeah, we in the mix. Yeah, we in the mix. It's another episode. Here we go. The Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Interviewing the hottest news that you will send to the celebrities. Make sure to subscribe so you can get notified weekly. Jimmy Star, he's the king of cool. Ron Russell, he's a gorgeous dude. Chat room is live and you would be a fool not to vibe with us at the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Come watch it live on W4CY Radio. Miss some past episodes? Download on iTunes. The Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. It's the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Oh.